The only drawback so far I've found to driving this 2011 is the E85 just absolutely stinks. It, ooh, it smells bad when you fire it up. <laughs> As we get ready to go on this road trip with the car uh, we need to put brakes on it and uh, if nothing else it's gonna need brakes the brakes are at about oh 30 percent so we decided that it would probably be best just to go ahead and swap them out I mean they'll last you know they'll last a 400 mile road trip that's not a problem but safety first so we're gonna head over to see if this auto parts store is open yet and uh, grab some brakes and then uh, head back to the house and put them on and we'll have to do a couple of other things before we take off but we'll cover those here in a bit so let's get to the auto parts store okay so I'm getting ready to go on a road trip and uh, we got to get the car ready so we're gonna put brakes on it we're gonna fix the airbag buzzer warning light hopefully and I got more paint so uh, let me show you what I got here I got brakes for the front brakes for the back uh, got a bunch of brake clean apparently it's pro series but that just means it's in a bigger can and uh, so now let's jack up the car and we'll get the wheels off and uh, do that so let's do that first thing we're gonna have to do is jack up the car take the wheel covers off and then get the lug wrench and do that but I'm rather lazy and I have air tools for this so let me crank up the air compressor it's kind of loud and then we'll get the car up on jack stands I'll get the tires off we got the hubcaps off and the interesting thing about them is they actually attach by the lug nuts not on the outside these are just guides they got these weird lug nuts. They just kind of clamp onto these right there. It's a weird setup, but it's a good setup because you very rarely lose one. Oh, a little tight. Breaker bar out after this one. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. One thing under here you'll find this is 916. These are all metric, so I need to go and find some uh, metric tools. All right, now that we got this loose, it doesn't seem to want to clear the brake caliper, so. I got my little crowbar out here, and I'm going to see if I can't peel this off one way or another. Uh, but it's uh, wanting to be very, very difficult. I know there's probably an easier way, but I'm not finding it. So... Give me a minute and I'll have it off. Okay, so we got this off with a, a hammer. It was just really bound up. It's a dual piston caliper. These really are easy. They just come right out. They're on these little pla uh, metal tracks, so they just pop out here. These are in decent shape, but they're pretty well heat soaked. So we're going to go ahead... And I uh, just put a new pair on and we'll compare the old ones to the new ones here in a minute Okay, so these are the old ones. They actually have quite a bit of meat left on them in comparison um, So these probably Would be all right, but for some reason these were it was just giving me real sponginess. So 
go ahead and decide to replace them. We got the rear ones here. They are quite a bit smaller. So let's go ahead and get these on and then uh, we'll do the other side. A little trick. If you need to get these moved back in so you can put the new pads on, just put a C-clamp on with the old brake. Just, it's hard to do one-handed. Just screw it in and you can see the uh, pistons going in. Now, if you have a little fluid come out and you see some drips on the ground from the reservoir, don't be alarmed. That's just pushing fluid back into the reservoir. Um, but get these in. But just remember before you take off to give your brakes a few pumps. I've forgotten that little fact. And uh, I had a wild ride. It was great. Okay, so we got the brakes on. It was pretty easy. They just slid on like normal disc brakes do. But let me show you what the hardest part was. These bolts back here, this one here and the one that's on the bottom, that was, uh, they were really hard to line up for some reason. Once I got them started though, boom, they went right in. You got one started, the other one, the one that got started lined the other one up and they slid in really easily. So let me button this side up. I'll get it done and then uh, I'll do the other side real quick. As for this side, it's identical to the other side. So basically, it's wash, spin, rinse, repeat. So we'll get this one real quick, and then we'll talk about the back. Well, it took us literally about 30 seconds to get all this off. But when we took this off, we discovered that these were cracked. So these have suffered some horrendous heat. And uh, let's pull the back one off and see what it looks like. It's also cracked. So the other side wasn't cracked like this. So that's interesting. Sometimes you have to use a little extra force. The guy put one too many ugga duggas on it. So I got the jack handle. And we're just caressing it over. So it came loose there. So now we can put that. Ah, there we are. Put this back on it. There we are. Now the wheel will come off. Okay, so I evaluated the back brakes. They're actually pretty well shot. It seems they changed the front but didn't do the back. It's got these long 10 millimeter bolts and I had to go on a hunt. Typical cliche style to find a socket, which was great. Uh, so pretty much the same as the, uh, as the front. I'm going to beat it off with a hammer, press the piston in, and then put the new ones in. So let's get the old one out and see what the wear looks like. All right, so we had to do something uh, that's sometimes pretty typical. The brake cylinder had a lot of pressure into it, the piston. So we had to uh, loosen up the bleeder valve in order to get this back far enough to accept the new brake pads. So we pushed it back, we bled it, and uh, a bunch of fluid came out. So we have to get all this cleaned up. But also, when you do that, just remember you need to break, bleed your brakes accordingly and uh, just make sure you got plenty of fluid and all that because these are your brakes. But make sure also you have all this cleaned up. So let's put the new brakes on, get all this cleaned up, and then uh, we'll do the other side. Because people have the misconception that the rear brakes don't wear out as fast as the front brakes, and in some cases they don't. They used to when brakes were made out of real things like asbestos. Uh, asbestos brakes were the best, but now with organic brakes, you pretty much, if you change the fronts, you should probably change out the backs. There's probably been two or three brake changes on the fronts before these were even touched. And the odd thing was, is as thin as these are, they weren't even squealing. So it's a good thing we changed them out. Here's the new ones. You can see the difference. So we've got a to put the tire back on that side so let's get the tire put back on and we'll wash rinse repeat uh, on the other side get that done and then we'll move on to the next thing okay so we got all the tires hubcap brakes everything's done on that now we need to check the fluids mainly just the brake fluid uh, yeah it appears to be full so let's uh, go ahead fire up the car and give the brakes a few pumps that way there's not any real surprises when I take off. All right, so let's get going. 
see what kind of lights stay on. Nah, all right, so, oh, there are no brakes. There are really no brakes. Okay, they're coming back. Kind of. So. Ah, there they are. But it'll take some work, and then uh, we'll have to top the fluid back off and re bleed them. Okay, so we got the brakes bled. I didn't show that because of liability issues. But I basically used the same old let's make a mess in the driveway, scream, yell, and curse at each other video uh, procedure. So. Now that we got that done, let's take this out for a quick spin, and then uh, we'll see if we can't get the airbag warning light to quit dinging. Well, we tried to uh, do the airbag warning light code. It's in the passenger side seat. Uh, the code did not start till we swapped out the seats, and spe specifically till we swapped out the passenger side seat. So I don't know what the problem is there, but it's irritating. Uh, but we tried a couple different methods to get the light to clear and the code to clear. We'll try something else here, but we may just be a broken wire or something like that. Um, so we'll get that figured out. Now, what we need to do now is I'm going to do just a little bit of paint correction because I really, on this trip, I kind of want to have the car looking mostly decent. So I'm going to get out with a little bit of sandpaper scuff up the back and we're going to clean up the trunk lid just a little bit all right so we cleaned up the paint kind of we just cleaned up the trunk lid the roof's going to take some real work so i'll worry about that later but the trunk was just really ugly so i had to take care of that but let me show you what i did we had to throw a few things in for the road trip tomorrow and uh here they are we have a few things back here we don't need, but I threw in a full-size jack, uh, the tire irons right there. I have an extra tire, and I have a spare, so um, the hubcaps, we're just leaving those. I'm not bothering those. I might grab a few tools and all that, too, but we'll see. So, as you can hear in the background, we have the air compressor going. We're going to check these tires. They're supposed to be at 44 PSI. Uh, they look a little low, so we'll go ahead and check them and uh, get them all filled up accordingly. I'd like to say I took the wheel cover off to make this easier for you to see, but I lost the cap. So, while it's off, let's check this. Because, well, yeah. And it is sitting at... Hmm... About 35. So we're going to make this right at 40, and that's kind of what we want. So, put some air in it. And... Hmm. 40. Now let's go do the other side. We did the driver's side, so... It's at... Yeah, so we'll have to air that up. That's probably where the little bit of the vibration has been. Tires that are low on air, if especially if they're balanced unevenly with one's got more air than the other, they do weird things. So it's important to have especially your front tires aired up properly, as well as your back tires, but your front tires, because if they're low or too high they, and they're uneven, they will cause different kinds of vibrations and pull and cause all sorts of uneven uh, tire wear and stress out your steering components. So it's important to have them where they need to be. If you're unsure what they need to be, look on your tire. It should be around here. It's right here. It says 44 PSI max pressure. That's 44 cold. So uh, I do it 40. That way when the tire heats up, it's going to add 5 to 7 more PSI in there. It doesn't get too hot, but it's important to have them even regardless. So, So let's see where it is now. And it is just right there. And with that, the final touch is we put the old license plate on the front of the Crown Vic. With that, I think we'll end this video. The car is ready to go on the road trip. Uh, 
we got the tires all done up, the brakes done up, shocks were fine. Uh, got the jack and the tools we need in it. We're going to go ahead and uh, most likely check the transmission fluid just out of, you know, it's you should do that. The oil's great because uh, it's brand new and everything's good to go. So I guess in the next video we're going to take off and we're going to head down to Oklahoma City and have a good time down there and just totally evaluate the car and uh, it's going to be something we've been planning because that's why we initially bought the car. We were going to build the car and go on adventures in it. So hopefully we can do some of that with this video uh, series. So I appreciate it. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you later.